with the Thanksgiving holiday, this week is usually, you know, typically one of the biggest bar weeks of the year. And to help make sure we keep everything safe for everyone, it might be a good time to get a refresher on Michigan's Dram Shop Law. And if you're wondering, what is the Dram Shop Law? What is that concept? Well, to break it down, Tom Sinus from Sinus Jameis Law Firm joins us. Hi, Tom. Hi, Todd. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our pleasure. So clue us in. What is this concept behind the Dram Shop Law? So that's an old term, an old legal term, dram shop law. We don't actually use that as the official legal term anymore because we have a state statute that governs governs what we call retail licensees. And retail licensees are those entities that are licensed by the state, specifically the Michigan Liquor Control Commission, to sell alcohol. Uh, the concept of a dram shop law, which is still a term very much used casually, is the I idea that a retail licensee, an entity that sells or furnishes alcohol, can, in certain circumstances, be liable if there is an injury or death resulting from the selling or the furnishing of alcohol through that establishment. That's the basic concept of what we call a dram shop law. And when it comes to that, is, is it different for folks who legally can purchase alcohol versus those underaged if they are involved in this? It is, and it's a really important distinction. So the distinctions here, we're talking about when one of these retail licensees can be liable. For those who are underage, it is a hard and fast no tolerance rule, meaning there is no permitted selling or furnishing of alcohol to someone who's under the age of 21. And so if a licensee, if a bar furnishes alcohol, sells alcohol to someone under 21, then the bar can be liable. It doesn't matter the level of the intoxication of the underage person. So that's those are our, our underage folks. For people who are of age, 21 or older, the standard is what we call visible intoxication, meaning that if the retail licensee sells or furnishes alcohol to someone who is a visibly intoxicated person, then that scenario is where the bar can be liable if there is later injury or death that results from that visibly intoxicated person consuming the alcohol. So those are our two general standards of liability for the various classes of people that could be involved here. With so many people tipping a few back this week, it is typically a big bar week during Thanksgiving holiday break. What about bar owners? I'm sure they're a little nervous. Are there any unique rules or maybe some defenses that they have to protect themselves? There are. There's actually quite a few. So, again, this concept applies if a third party, you know, somebody who wasn't the one drinking, is injured or killed as a result of the consumption of alcohol. So the first rule to remember is that is that, that person has to prove that it was that consumption of alcohol that what is what we call a proximate cause, or simply put, played a role in the injury or death. So that's one rule that everyone has to be mindful of. There are other rules specific to those victims, those third party victims. The first is what we call a, a statutory notice period. So if one of those victims retains a lawyer to help them, then the lawyer has to make sure that they notify the bar within 120 days of being retained by the victim. And if they don't, then the victim cannot pursue a claim. After that, the victim and their lawyer has to make sure that they file a lawsuit no later than two years from the date of the injury or death. Again, those are rules that apply to, to everyone. On, on the bar side of things, there are specific defenses. Uh, one of them, a good example, is the law provides a defense to bars if the, the, visibly, if the underage uh, consumer of alcohol had a fake ID. So that provides the, the bar one defense. Uh, another defense is that the visibly intoxicated person cannot be the one pursuing the claim against the bar. It has to be this idea of a third party. And then the other thing to, to this is a technical point, but if a, a lawyer is representing a victim, the lawyer, if they're going to pursue a claim, a, a legal action against the bar, they have to include the intoxicated person as a defendant as well. We call this name and retain. You have to name the intoxicated person and keep them as part of the lawsuit. And that's also because bars have a right 
for what's called indemnification, meaning they can seek reimbursement from the intoxicated person if the bar is held liable. So there's kind of a lot to unpack there. I think the takeaway there is that, yes, there are very specific rules that apply to these unique set of, of cases that are, they are personal injury or wrongful death cases, but they're subject to a whole different set of their own rules. Obviously, this is something that we hope never happens to anyone, but the stats do show that there are more traffic accidents and injuries through drunk driving this time of year, especially around this holiday. If someone is involved in that, heaven forbid, uh, where can they get more information? Where can they get the details they need to protect themselves? Well, I, I would recommend that if that happens, that people do seek the advice of legal counsel there, for some of the reasons I mentioned, but also because these cases can be very fact intensive and there's important evidence that has to be ascertained oftentimes very early on to determine where did the intoxicated person consume their alcohol? Was it at one place? Was it at multiple places? Uh, over what period of time? And the evidence that uh, to prove those, that various chain of events is something that needs to be gathered and collected soon. And then because of these unique rules, it's not something that I think people want to navigate on their own without some, some assistance. If, if people want more information from a firm like ours that does this type of work, they can find us online at www.sinusdramus.com. They can give us a call in West Michigan at 616-301-3333 or shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com.